Frederick Francis Bosworth was a very important figure in the early Pentecostal movement. In 1914, Bosworth played a large role in the founding of the Assemblies of God. He was also a very popular and prominent faith-healing evangelist. He was influential to other faith healers like William Branham and Oral Roberts. Bosworth's healing campaigns were highly publicized in the newspapers. F.F. F. Bosworth and his brother B.B. campaigned throughout the United States. However, before he became a noted faith healer, Bosworth was the band director at John Alexander Dowie's church in Zion. He was also a deacon in that church. That means that Bosworth would have held that John Alexander Dowie was the reincarnation of the prophet Elijah. Dowie claimed this title for himself in 1901. After Dowie was exposed as a fraud in 1906 by his right-hand man and successor Wilbur Glenn Valiva, Bosworth, along with John G. Lake and others, joined the Paramite cult. The Paramites were followers of Charles Fox Parham. After Dowie's downfall, Parham saw an opportunity to gain new followers for his movement. Claiming to have been sent directly from the Almighty himself, Parham took a trip to Zion City proclaiming himself to be a new Moses, a savior of the Dowieites from the evil commercialism of their leaders. During his time in Zion, Parham gained about 300 new followers. F.F. F. Bosworth was one of those followers. Bosworth believed and proclaimed Parham's doctrine that the gift of tongues was the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Both Bosworth and Lake preached Parham's doctrine in the streets in nearby towns. However, Bosworth came to reject part of Parham's doctrine later on in his own ministry. In 1907, several within the Paramite group were accused of the torture and murder of Letitia Greenhoff. This story made national headlines and caused an uproar in the nation. The Paramites were forced to flee Zion and some, including Lake and Bosworth, left Zion City. Bosworth joined up with another former Zion leader, Cyrus Faulkner. Faulkner was holding meetings in Milwaukee when Bosworth joined him. In 1908, they were holding services together in Indiana. As a side note, 1907 was also the year that two other Paramites, John G. Lake and Tom Hesmelhawk, fled from Indiana to South Africa. After touring in several states, Bosworth finished his tour in the state of Texas, where he founded his first church. As time grew, so did his fame, and it wasn't long before F.F. F. Bosworth and his brother B.B. were national faith-healing celebrities. The Bosworth brothers were attracting huge crowds, numbering in the thousands. One of those services was at the Cato Tabernacle in Indianapolis, Indiana. Ironically, this would be the same tabernacle that William Branham would host the infamous Jim Jones for a healing convention in 1956. Jim Cobb is laying on the airfield dead at this moment. Remember the, 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 the uh, Oliver woman said she she come over and kill me if her sons wouldn't stop her. These, these, these are people the peddlers of hate. All we're doing is laying down our life. We're not letting them take our life. We're laying down our life. We laid it down. We got tired. We didn't commit suicide. We committed an act of revolutionary suicide protesting the conditions of an inhumane world. It was on May 13th, 1927 that James Buck attended a Bosworth healing service. Buck had been an invalid for the better part of four years and was carried from an automobile to the platform by two men. After being anointed by Bosworth, he walked across the platform claiming that he had vastly improved. But just two weeks later, James Buck was dead. His doctor warned him not to go, but Buck failed to heed 
the doctor's warnings. Here at newspapers.com, this is the Altoona Tribune, Altoona, Pennsylvania, from May 14th, 1927. The article is called Faith Healer Meat Marked by Surprises. And this is the testimony of James Buck. James Buck was at this meeting and supposedly got healed. Let me just read this one section right here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. And uh, we'll start right here. Friday the 13th apparently held no hoodoo for the many who came to the altar for anointment and prayers. Probably the most outstanding cure claimed by the scores gathered on the platform last night was that of James Buck of Duncansville, who was carried from an automobile to the altar by two men. He um, said that he had been suffering from a complication of ailments more than four years, having been bedfast most of that time. He has been unable to take more than a few steps for for years, he said. But after being anointed by F.F. Bosworth, he walked across the platform and declared he was vastly improved. So now we'll move over to this article right here from the same newspaper, Altoona Tribune, Altoona, Pennsylvania. And uh, I wanted you to see the headline here. So I'm going to actually zoom out so you can see that headline. Uh, right here, man dies believing himself cured. This is speaking of James Buck. And now I'm going to zoom back in so we can look at the actual article and read that. This is from the Altoona, same newspaper, Altoona, Pennsylvania, Saturday morning, May 28th, 1927. Uh, Widow Tales of Invalid Strong Faith. So let's start right here at the beginning. And uh, we won't read the entire article because that continues on page 20. But what we will do is read a large portion of the article here. This is a story of a man who died firm in the belief that Bosworth Brothers, through the power of faith, had healed him in their tabernacle here the night of Friday, May 13th. James U. Buck, 50, of Duncansville, a semi-invalid more than four years was the man. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more so we can see the smaller print. Mr. Buck confessed his faith more than seven months ago. He was unfaltering in his belief in the Almighty. According to his widow, he went to the Faith Healing Tabernacle uh, for the first time the night of May 11th. He was carried from his home to a waiting automobile in which he was taken to the tabernacle. He returned the following night satisfied in his heart that he had enough faith. He asked to be carried to the altar the third night and was anointed by the Reverend F.F. F. Bosworth. Now, let's look at uh, what uh, the doctor had to say. We have this little section right here called Worn by Doctor. James Buck had been a patient of mine many months, said an Altoona physician last night, adding, I had warned him not to exert himself in any manner and above everything else to avoid excitement of any kind. It is my professional opinion his trips to the Bosworth Tabernacle not only proved most injurious, but they hastened his death, the doctor said. What did Bosworth say about this? Well, Bosworth had nothing to say. Well, not really, as we'll see. F.F. F. Bosworth, when questioned last night concerning the supposed healing of James Buck, declared he has nothing to say for publication, but at the same time, cited several instances of cures said to have been beyond the aid of medical science. Both he and his wife asserted that a man may be cured of one thing and die of another. Although he cannot recall the case of Mr. Buck, mm -hmm, he hinted that such a condition might have existed. He recited an incident that occurred several years ago while campaigning in a big city. A man approached him claiming to be deaf. After being anointed and declaring faith, he declared that he was cured. He brought the remaining members of his family who were in a similar condition, and they too were cured, according to Mr. Bothworth. Not satisfied with that, he sent for his aged father, who was almost stone deaf. He, too, was cured, Reverend Bosworth said. When he returned home, the Spirit warned him to discontinue the use of tobacco, the evangelist said. He did not heed the voice of the Spirit. 
His deafness came back while sleeping, it is claimed. He threw away his tobacco, and the spirit approved of his act, for his hearing returned, Reverend Bosworth said. The man was in his 90s, according to Reverend Bosworth. So, according to uh, Bosworth and other faith healers, you can actually lose your healing by sin or unbelief. And Bosworth actually wrote an article uh, for the Voice of Healing magazine, Branham's magazine, and this is the article right here. You can see the title, Why All Are Not Healed. It is from the Voice of Healing, April 1948. And in this article, Bosworth tries to give a biblical explanation for why one can lose their healings. But we'll be talking about that in another video.